Hello and welcome to Talk Wargaming. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to play Wings of Glory World War 1. Now you may remember from my previous video I kind of briefly covered uh, how the game played but in this video I'm actually going to show you how to play the game properly uh, using the basic rule set. So uh, I've got a couple of planes here and I'm going to kind of guide you through all of the mechanics of the game and also kind of give you a little uh, demonstration at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is explain the actual playing pieces and how these bases kind of work in the game. Now. We have to, several different types of planes. Uh, these kind of two of the basic ones. So this plane in, on the uh, the left here has a single firing arc, which is denoted on the base by um, these black lines and this red. That means that this plane can fire anything that is within these two lines going outwards. Uh, this plane on the other hand also has the forward facing weapons. However, it also has a rear facing weapon, as you can see at the back here. So that's the kind of two main differences between. Uh, the, the planes that you'll find in this game. There are some larger planes as well, multi-engine multi planes, but for the purposes of the basic rules, uh, this is all that you need. So if I just remove this one for the time being, and also take the plane off this base, I'll explain what some of the, the other details on the base are. So of course I've uh, explained the, the firing arc, and now you also have these details, details at the bottom. Um, the first section is the movement deck. Now in the game um, you use a set of cards and you choose manoeuvres from this set of cards. Um, each plane has an associated deck, and for this one it's the AL deck, and that plane um, basically, because it's a smaller plane, can do tighter turns and can move faster than a bigger plane which will have a different deck. The second is also for a deck, and this denotes which damage deck this plane uses uh, when it's firing on an opponent. So in this case it's an A, and I'll uh, be covering the damage decks later on. The, uh, the third uh, green symbol uh, represents how much damage this plane can take before it's destroyed, and in this case it's 16. Um, we also get the name of the plane at the bottom there as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll um, crack out one of the, the movement decks and we can have a look at how manoeuvring works in the game. So here we have the, the Fokker plane and its um, associated movement cards. So we have these, as you can see, the L deck, and on this, the bottom of the base it also says L. Uh, the deck is as follows. We've got quite a few different cards in there, a um, few different types of manoeuvres. I've just kind of laid a few of them out here so you can get a rough idea as to how movement works using these cards. Now we have uh, some fairly uh, straightforward moves, just flying forward. Uh, these kind of meanders. Um, turns to a 45 degree angle and also turns in a 90 degree angle. So how do these actual cards relate to movement of the plane? So if I just move, um, let's just do the 90 degree angle for the time being. Now on the base um, you can see that there's a black arrow at the back there and also a black line at the front there. Now these associate with the arrows and the lines on the card. So first of all you place your plane down, you line the black marker up with the bottom of the blue line on the card, as so. And then the plane moves by lining up the black arrow at the back of the base to the blue arrow on the card. And as such, the, the plane has now performed a 90 degree maneuver. So as you can see, movement is extremely easy to perform using these cards. Now there are a few more complex maneuvers, uh, such as the Immelman and also this kind of uh, these stall actions as well. Now the Immelman um, basically involves the plane following the trajectory and then turning around at the end to kind of face its oncoming opponents. And also you have these stall cards as well, which denotes this. Now, in order to perform uh, these maneuvers, uh, you need to perform a straight line, maneuver, which is denoted by this uh, symbol here, before and after the turn. So I'll explain how the maneuver sequence works a little bit more in detail later on. But basically you'd have to do a straight move, um, then an Immelman followed by a, another straight move in order to perform these special actions. And the same goes for these stall actions as well. So now that we have the fundamentals of movement down, let's move on to how damage works in Wings of Glory. So like movement, uh, damage in Wings of Glory is also determined by cards. Now, uh, this is a deck, and this is the A deck, which is a, the A deck use, is used by these, both of these planes here. Um, there are four decks altogether, A, B, C, and D, with each deck performing more damage as you go up. Now the A deck is the, the least amount of damage, and in here there's kind of just a selection of different cards ranging from zero to about five damage and there's also some of these special cards which uh, denote an instant explosion and there is also a few, let me just find some for the purposes of the basic rules we're only really interested in these symbols here now this means that a weapon jam has occurred and I'll cover that uh, a little bit later on uh, these are rudder damage which are only used in the standard rules and not in the basic rules so we won't be covering them in this particular video so we have two planes in front of us now you want to see whether or not these are actually uh, 
in range to fire. And we do this by using uh, this ruler here which comes with the game. Now, you do this by placing the, the bottom, the end of the ruler, touching the flying base of the plane, making sure that you're within the firing arc as we discussed at the beginning. And so long that any part of this ruler touches um, the enemy plane's base, then it's in range to fire. You may notice that there's a slight line in here. Now if the plane is midway, then what happens is you draw two damage cards instead of the normal one. So let's just put it back to here for the time being. So this plane has now damaged uh, that plane there, so we draw a card. So this plane has performed no damage, however these cards are not known by the firer. The person who owns the plane that's getting shot at will actually pick up this card and keep it hidden from the opponent. Now the intention of this is to make sure that the opponent doesn't actually know how much damage your plane has taken. Uh, you could be on the verge of destruction and need one more hit and you could uh, maybe decide to shoot someone else just, in, um, just instead. So there is an element of deception here but you do need to kind of be honest and once your plane reaches the total number of damage points available for your particular plane then it has been destroyed and you need to tell your opponent so. However, going back to the, the jamming, if I just find the card again, as you normally keep these secret, in the case of a jamming uh, result, you don't. Now what happens here is the opponent then uh, is unable to fire the weapons on their plane for three phases of a turn. So um, this is done by using some counters, let me just find a counter. So these counters are used and these are just kind of added to the, the dashboard of the plane which are covering the next section. Uh, you have three of these and you remove one each phase and for each phase that you've got one of these you can't do any shooting. So although you've been damaged um, you've actually received no damage at all and the enemy plane is actually uh, at a disadvantage now. So at the moment it may seem a little bit disjointed between them, how the movement and the, the weapons and everything works. Uh, but in the next section I'll be covering the uh, the console which will kind of tie everything together and I'll also explain the sequence of the turn as well. So here in front of me I have the aeroplane console. Now this is used for a number of things during the gameplay and each player will have one of these per plane that they are controlling. Now normally you'd only actually have about uh, two planes under your control uh, just as things get quite complicated. Now I'll just explain some of the sections here. The first one is where you place your plane card. Now as I, um, as you can probably tell it's very very similar to what we see on the flying base. We have the, the firing guard for the weapon as well as the movement deck, the damage deck and how many uh, points of damage the plane can take. So that just sits up here and it acts as like a bit of um, kind of a reference point for when you want to uh, kind of see how much damage you can do. Uh, the second section here is the damage and now whenever your plane takes damage you place your card in this section face down and if you take another damage card you don't show it to your opponent as we discussed in the last section and you just keep popping it there and then eventually when this, stat when this pile adds up to um, equal and or greater to your damage value then your plane is destroyed. The section over here is the damage plus one pile. Now this is only actually used in optional rules so I won't cover it in this particular tutorial. At the bottom here we have these three sections uh, denoted by one, two and three. Now these uh, correspond with the, uh, the phases in a turn. Now a game turn consists of three phases and in each of these phases you'll perform movement and shooting simultaneously with your opponent. At the beginning of each of your turns you will uh, choose three cards for your manoeuvres that you want to perform. So let's uh, do a straight straight line, um, let's do this kind of meander to the left and also let's get a turn in there as well. So these are the movements that I'm planning to do over the three phases of this turn. However, the opponent will not know what these movements are yet so we place them uh, face down once we've chosen them. And after each uh, section, of the f after each phase, we um, we draw the card and we perform a maneuver. And then we, if we check for in range, and if we're in range, then we perform damage and we start to draw the cards for the damage as well. Once everyone has moved and shoot, if they're able to, uh, we move on to the second phase, and the second maneuver card is then revealed. And once again, we perform the maneuvers and the shooting until finally we reach the third phase, and the final maneuver is revealed. So we keep repeating this and then once the uh, all three cards have been revealed we start the next turn which involves collecting these back up and then once again uh, choosing three cards from the deck to place down. Now by choosing your cards at the beginning of your turn and um, having to kind of stick with them regardless of whether or not you know uh, what your opponent is going to do. It kind of means that you ha it gives it a nice gameplay element because you have to kind of anticipate what your opponent is going to do and kind of act accordingly. So if you think they're going to veer off to the right, you have to kind of 
try and veer off to the right as well without kind of getting yourself into trouble. You've got to kind of think ahead uh, at least kind of three turns in advance. So now that I've covered movement, damage and the console and also how the turn progresses as well, uh, I'm going to kind of tie all these kind of ideas together in terms of kind of a demonstration uh, turn with each of the three phases so you can see how the kind of all these ideas uh, come together to play the game. In this demonstration I have the, uh, the German plane on the left and the British plane on the right there. Now this is the beginning of the turn so um, at the moment the German plane is closely tailing the British plane so the British plane needs to kind of get turn around, get out the firing line of the, the German plane and also kind of try to turn its guns on the on its opponent. However, the German player at this stage wants to kind of anticipate where the British plane is going to go and kind of um, act accordingly. So I've, I've already chosen out the, the manoeuvres for this turn, so let's uh, start with the first turn and reveal the first manoeuvre card. So here we have the consoles for both the plane, we have the British plane over on the right here and the German plane on the left here. So I've already picked out the cards as I mentioned. Um, so as it's the first phase we're going to be flipping these first cards. So the German plane is going to be performing a forward manoeuvre, whereas the British plane is going to be performing a 90 degree turn to the right. With the manoeuvre cards revealed, the uh, the car actions are then performed. So the, the British plane will go first, remember we line the, the black line up with the blue line and move the plane so that it's black arrow lines up with the blue arrow. So that's move completed and these actions are completed uh, simultaneously so the uh, the German plane then follows the, the line and goes straight forward. With movement complete we now have to see if any of the planes are within firing arcs of each other. Now the, the British plane is facing this way so there's no way it's going to be able to hit the German plane. However the German plane has just happens to be able to keep the, uh, the British plane in its sights so let's just kind of measure to see what kind of distance we've got. Remember measuring from the, the centre stand and we can see that the actual the British plane is within half distance. Therefore we draw two damage cards. So as the British plane has taken damage we have to draw uh, two cards from the A damage deck and remember we use the A damage deck because this uh, German plane has a A damage rating. So we draw two cards because it's within close range. The first card is a uh, three damage. Now we don't show this to the German player and we just simply place it in our damage section. And the second card is zero damage, however we have actually caused the German player to stall. So we place this card down, we do have to actually show the German player that we he has stalled so that he can place his markers. So we pop this over there like so. And the German player is required to place three of these jam markers on its card. Now these uh, markers are removed at the end of each full phase and once you've removed them all he can continue to shoot. We now reveal the second cards in the turn sequence. And for the German, he's going to be performing an Immelman turn, and the British player will be continuing uh, his turn by uh, moving 90 degrees to the right again. And we perform the action. So the German plane is performing the Immelman, so we follow it along the blue line, and then we twist it back around so that the black arrow is now in line with the blue arrow. So as you may have noticed beforehand, I used a uh, the straight move. So I this I've now been able to use the Immelman, which means that in the next turn I have to do a straight line. So if I'll just put this to one side and perform the action for the British plane, now it's continuing to turn to the right. So we follow that around, which puts the planes pretty much parallel with each other. So now movement is completed. We check to see if any planes are within firing arcs, and they clearly aren't, as they are both kind of parallel to each other. Which means we move on to the third and final movement phase. So as it's the beginning of the third and final phase for this turn, uh, we have to remove one of uh, these um, jamming tokens from the German player, and we then go on to reveal these manoeuvre cards. So the German player is going to have to fly in a straight line because he performed the Immelman turn in the previous phase, whereas the British player is continuing his right turn, however he's going to be going at a 45 degree angle as opposed to a 90 degree angle. And so the, the German plane moves directly forward as it has to because it performed a Immelman turn in the last phase. So we remove that card, put that to one side. And now the British plane manoeuvres and we are now ready for the shooting phase. So the, uh, the German plane is clearly within the British plane's firing arc. However, the opposite cannot be said for the German plane. So now we, we get out the range ruler and obviously it is easily within half distance of the... Uh, of the plane's short distance there, so that means uh, we have to draw two cards for the German plane. 
So this time, as it's the German player who has taken damage from the British plane, we have to look at the damage value for the Sopworth Snipe, and it's a, a damage deck, so we draw two cards, as is within uh, close range. So the first card is three damage, and we place that there without revealing it to the opponent, and the second card is zero damage. So when you get these zeros, are quite nice, because the enemy may think he has damaged you, but he's actually performed no damage whatsoever. And as he doesn't know, you just place it in the pile there, and that is your total damage. So as you can clearly see from this small demonstration I've just had here of just a single phase, a lot can happen. At the beginning of the phase, the German player was tailing the British plane, but by the end of it, the British plane is in a much better position now. So at this stage of the game, uh, the German player will kind of be wanting to think it needs to get out of the way of the British plane, whereas the British plane will also want to kind of maintain its tail on the German plane. Now this just was a short demonstration of just two planes. Now normally you'd probably play with about two planes uh, about four planes all together in a game and each plane can be controlled by uh, a single player or you can have one player controlling two planes. Um, when you get kind of more planes involved it starts getting a little bit more interesting as you kind of dodge and weave one plane you've got to kind of got to think about what another plane is doing at the same time. So a uh, short kind of demonstration I hope it was helpful for you um, at least kind of give you a basic idea as to how the Wings of Glory rules play out. Uh, this was just the basic rule set. There is a standard rule set for uh, including different types of damage and also an advanced rule set um, where special maneuvers can be uh, performed. Such as, and also, um, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the game, uh, the planes actually come with these uh, little flying rods as well. There's four in a pack and you can actually extend them up by kind of adding more and that represents the altitude of the plane. So you can actually get it so the planes can move up and down in altitude so they can only actually attack planes that are on the same kind of height level as they are. As you can probably see by how quickly I managed to explain the rules here, Wings of Glory is a great fun game to play. It's also very quick to pick up and learn as well. Um, it's very easy to set up as well because you don't need to worry about uh, miniatures and hundreds of miniatures placing out and units. And it's literally just about four planes that come pre-assembled and pre-painted, so you don't even have to worry about that. Um, if you like this uh, demonstration, please let me know in the comments as I'd like to do more of these kind of things as well. If that's if they kind of are received well. Um, I'm always open to criticism, so if I went too fast or didn't explain things in enough detail, uh, please let me know. Um, and as always, be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with any extra content that I might do for Wings of Glory or any similar games to this. So, And as always, thanks for watching and goodbye.